Good evening, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church, and I'm here relaxing in my home. I'm pre-recording these evening prayers uh, for you while I'm on vacation for fall break with my family. Please know that you are also in my prayers each day while I am on vacation as well. Today is the eighth day of October, and we've been celebrating the festival day of Richard Eli and William Bliss, two wonderful men of God who brought about an understanding of God's economy in a different way of the gospel. I'll tell you a little bit more about them here in just a few moments. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence as we wind down our day. We are on page 127 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 127. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, through thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all of our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 126, found on page 782 in your Book of Common Prayer, or also in your Holy Scriptures. Please join me in Psalm 126, or in the silence and the reflection of your own heart. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore the fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negba. Those who sowed with, with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures continue with a passage from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 41 through 47. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were all together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as many had needed. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, th these passages are incredibly perfect for today's festival day of Richard Eli and William Bliss. Richard Eli uh, was born in 1854 in Ripley, New York, the son of Presbyterians, but he went off to college at Columbia University and fell in love with the Episcopal Church and became an Episcopalian. After then, he went on and be got his doctorate at the University of Heidelberg in Germany. Then uh, he went to John Hopkins University uh, uh, to serve as an assistant professor. 
and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. After that, he was appointed an economics professorship at the University of Northwestern University in Chicago, Illinois in 1925. Prior to that, though, uh, in, while he was at Wisconsin in 1894, Eli was accused of teaching socialistic pr principles and an effort to try to remove him from his professorship. But Eli rejected all those, those comments and with extreme prejudice about the extremists, about capitalism and socialism. And, but he argued for the ideas for competition amongst all people and businesses and also for regulation for those uh, businesses in, capital, in their competitiveness uh, to help raise the, the standard for our moral and ethical level of economic justice. For you see, Eli believed in the fact that the gospel message was something that we should try to work towards for all people. He would fight for those uh, who were disenfranchised, especially, and challenge the Episcopal Church multiple times to try to uh, earn the rights and the dignity of all American workers uh, during that period of time. And so as a Christian, he tried to bring about the, uh, a, the, the, the greater good of capitalism and socialism because he thought they were also a part of the gospel message that Jesus was trying to renew uh, in his time. Uh, William Bliss was a Congregationalist who was born in Constantinople, Turkey in um, uh, 19, 1856, on, in August 1856. He was born there with his parents who were Christian missionaries. But just like Bliss or uh, Eli, uh, Richard Eli, he also believed that the church should always be calling us back to the gospel message of economic justice for all. And during, as he, he became a Congregationalist uh, minister, he fell in love as well in 1886 to become an Episcopal deacon. And from that, a year later, he became an Episcopal priest. He served in Massachusetts, New York, and uh, California, and was still a vivid part of the Christian socialistic movement. In that, those, he felt that Christians had a responsibility to help those in need and those who are always on the fringes of economic injustice. He was once said saying, rooted and grounded in Christ, the liberator, the head of humanity. Uh, Richard Eli died in Old Lyme, Connecticut in October 4th, 1943. And William Bliss uh, died in, on this date, October 8th, in 1926. And so we give thanks and we go to sleep tonight. When we think about what it means to be a Christian, it means, I think, that we can sleep easily when we try to help those in need out of our own wealth, to be able to help those to have a place like this, a home to sleep in and a warm bed. For sometimes, the, the life isn't always fair to us, not, and not to all of us. And sometimes Jesus was reaching out to those who were on the fringes, the lame, lepers, those who were prostitutes or tax collectors. All of us in Jesus' eyes were children of God. Amen. We continue our prayers on page 132, page 132. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together, my brothers and sisters, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us on how economic justice can be lived. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. 
Let us pray. This is our colic prayer for this day. Blessed God, whose son Jesus came as servant to all, we thank you for William Bliss and Richard Eli, whose dedication to the common will through economic justice led them to be bold reformers of the world and the church. And we pray that we with them may find our true happiness through self-sacrifice in service of your reign, where all the hungry are fed and the downtrodden are raised up through Jesus Christ, our liberator, who with you and the Holy Spirit, one, one lives, reigns, and one God lives now and forever. Amen. Continue our prayers on page 387 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 387, Prayers of the People, Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. We pray, O God, for the universal Church. We pray in thanksgiving for all of our brothers and sisters of the Roman Catholic Church, the Baptist Church, Evangelical Church, Methodist and Presbyterian and Congregationalist. We pray, O God, for all Christians, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray in thanksgiving for Richard Eli and William Bliss, for their help in understanding how our economics can be a part of justice and helping those in need by following the gospel message. We bless, ask you to bless all those who are in service work with Community Kitchen here, Paducah Cooperative Ministry. We pray, O oh God, for all those who work in service ministry to help those in need, in, both economically and shelter, and providing them uh, clothes and uh, furnishings, that their, may, that their name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray, O oh God, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all, all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray, O oh God, for all those elected officials. We pray for all those running for office at this time. We pray for civil discourse and for truth and honesty to be given to the American people. We pray for our nation. God, may you bless it and guide its leaders with holy wisdom to help all, serve all those they were elected to serve. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We especially give thanks for all those special people in our lives maybe co-workers or a person you're dating. We give thanks, O oh God, for our partners as, as married couples, and we pray for all those who are our couples, and we pray for our partners. We pray for all of our children and give thanks for all of our loved ones, especially those who are celebrating a birthday or a wedding anniversary. We especially pray for Emily Black, who celebrates her birthday today. Happy birthday, Emily. And for all those who celebrated a birthday this week, or a wedding anniversary. Happy wedding anniversary and uh, God's love for faith, love, and for life. We give thanks for all those special people in our lives that we may make a difference by placing the seed of love and forgiveness, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We give thanks, O Lord, for all the blessings of this life we especially give praise and thanks, Lord, for those who are suffering. We pray, God, for our doctors and nurses who are caring for those with coronavirus. We pray for those who were recently diagnosed, especially here in Kentucky. We pray for all those uh, who are suffering uh, as well from other uh, illnesses, from cancer, and those who are hospitalized or in nursing homes or assisted living facilities. Especially I like to remember those at Gaither Suites for Rivercrest and for at the lakes here locally here in uh, Paducah. We give thanks, oh God, for all of those who are caring for those in need at this time. And especially we pray for those struggling mentally and spiritually because of this terrible pandemic and for those suffering because of looking for work. We pray, Lord, for people to be able to find work and for employers to reopen their stores and uh, businesses and to keep their employees and customers safe. 
that there may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We pray, O oh God, for all those, those loved ones we have lost. We pause for a moment now as they are welcomed into your kingdom, Lord, and embraced as they are welcomed. Be with us in our mourning, O Lord. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We especially give thanks for all those who have planted the seed of faith in our lives. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. And we also offer our prayers and those others on our needs. If you'd like to pray, post a prayer online, you're welcome to do so. I'll pray with it later on as I look back on them. I just ask your prayers and we give thanks for all of our loved ones and prayers for those things that are dearest in our hearts. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people and, we pray, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may attain effectually to the glory of thy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue our prayers on page 134, at the bottom of page 134. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised, for these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in blessings and keeping us. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you have a wonderful night and a restful sleep and dream wonderful dreams. Thank you for joining me. I hope if, if, if you find this helpful for you, share it with somebody else online that they might find it helpful for them, especially if they're looking for a faith community or struggling in their own spiritual life. Remember, God loves you and I love you too. Have a wonderful sleep and sweet dreams.